morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Rise and shine on this early Saturday morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, Evangelist Brown. Good morning. Rise and shine, rise and shine. Good morning, uh, husband, Deacon Isana Morales. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Good morning, um, Evangelist Finkley. Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone that's joining. It is early. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give it a few more moments for uh, people to join. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Lady Brown. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. Thank you for everyone that's coming on this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to the Most High God. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. My mom is on. Thank you for being to join. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, please keep my uh, mom in your prayers as she's going through her healing process. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, sis. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yes, first lady, I did see it. Uh, I did read it. Um, I, I'll make the announcement. I will have to go back to it, though. But yes, I did see it. Good morning. I have some good news for everyone. We on day 20. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We day 20. And for, for those of us that have been staying strong this whole journey give god a hand clap of praise we almost at the finish line hallelujah thank you father we almost at the finish line thank you jesus hallelujah i woke up this morning i had an extra pep for myself thank you lord thank you lord and as I said before, this fast has been a different fast for me personally. You know, God has revealed some things to me uh, that I personally didn't know uh, that I've been battling with. So I just thank God for that. Um, um, it, it, it's just an awesome, awesome experience. I, I just, I just thank God for it. Um, of course, you know, you had your little struggles along the way with the food, um, but when you keep your mind focused on, you know, what's the main, uh, purpose and what you're seeking God for personally and what we're seeking God for, um, as far as what the corporate fast is about, what the church is in, in prayer and going to God for, it, it kind of, it, it, it gives you the extra push to go ahead and finish. Amen. And if you have fallen off along the way, you still can get back on it. Get back on it today. Hallelujah. Don't allow the enemy 
to tell you that you ate something that you were supposed to eat so the fast is over with for you. No, get back up. Ask for God, that was my weak moment, but I'm going to finish this fast. So even though we are on day 20, get back on it if you have fallen off because we, we need you. We need you to help us to push to this finish line. Amen. Because we are going after God for some things for the House of Rescue Church Ministries, for the things that God has promised this ministry. And we need, we need your prayers. We need your um, going before God for, for the ministry, for Pastor Brown, uh, for Lady Brown, for, for them being in the leadership roles that they are in. They need our prayers. Because the enemy wants to tear it down. But we have to all come together and fight this fight. Amen? Amen. So thank you for everyone that's joining right now. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Saturday. I really, really, really love the Lord because I love my Saturday. <laughs> but here I am going forth in ministry because I love God more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We ask you that you share, swipe, and invite your followers uh, so they can hear what thus says the uh, Lord on this morning. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, start off with prayer. Father God, we praise you. We thank you. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done, going and do, and have done, God. I pray that every word that is spoken out of my mouth on this morning, God, would be the words that you want spoken. I pray, God, that my flesh will die and that your spirit will rise up in me, God, uh, to come for, to go forth, God. I pray that the Holy Spirit would take and saturate this word, God, that was given to me, that people would feel it through the line, even though we are on social media, God. I pray right now that there is someone who is needing strength to finish um, this fast, God, that you would saturate them with the strength they need to go forth and stand strong so we can finish this fast with endurance. And we pray, God, that the word that is spoken is a word that someone may need to hear. And we pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you've seen the title, um, today we're talking about mental stability mental stability and the focus scripture that the Lord gave me was 2 Corinthians 10 3 through 5 <clears throat> and I will <clears throat> excuse me I will be reading the King James version <clears throat> for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we, we talk about mental stability, so we, we're talking about the mind. And the Lord gave me strongholds. See, a stronghold is anything that exalts itself in our minds, pretending to be bigger or more powerful than God. In the New American Standard Version, calls them fortresses. They are built by the imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, as we stated in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. I now define imagination as a nation of images, imagination, or a series of connected images that become stronghold or fortresses. Imagination, I'm going to say that again is a nation of images or a series of connected images that become a stronghold or a fortress. These imaginations can be a superstitious belief, an addition, and an 
and addiction. As um, Pastor Brown spoke on yesterday, if you missed that, please go back and watch it. Wrong thoughts and despair over a loss. They can consume our emotions because cause us to become overwhelmed and sap our mental strength. If we try to ignore them, we will never be able to live a life of victory promised by Jesus. As I stated in the beginning, the Lord in this fast showed me some areas in my life I didn't realize that were strongholds. And one of it was the despair of loss. As many of you may know or may not know, I lost my dad August 23rd of 21 suddenly. My dad was a believer in God and, and we used to have conversations and, and text messages and you know we was able to communicate about things that God the things that God was doing in our lives. And if I had questions about certain things, I used to be able to reach out to him and vice versa. And we just had that relationship. And he left this earth suddenly. And even though I'm a believer, it hurt. It really sucked the life out of me. Because even though I knew that he is in the hands of the Lord, he is in heaven with Jesus. That didn't help my human pain. And I tried to tuck it away. You know, knowing, finding peace. But it was still something I battled within my mind. No matter how many times I felt like I was past that a memory would come up and it would kind of push me back in that place because I thought I had more time with him. So it ended up consuming and it almost kind of had me in a place when I was, when I would worship God, it wasn't wholeheartedly because in a sense, I was angry at God. I was upset with him because he took my dad in my in my mind before time. So it consumed my emotions. It, I felt overwhelmed. And it sucked away from my mental strength at times. And for, for a time I, I was ignoring my true feelings what I was dealing with. But the devil's cheap target is the mind. Because the most effective way to influence behavior is to influence our thinking. Just think about it. He did that with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, causing Eve to doubt God's truth. So let's look at mental stability. And I want to give you the scientific definition of what mental stability is. Mental stability is a sense of general well-being. Friends and family are generally confident in the individual's ability to care for themselves physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So when a person has mental stability, you don't really worry about them because you know they okay. They they are living a life. Um, you don't worry you don't worry about them having um, issues. So you think. So let's talk about the opposite of mental stability. Mental instability consists of mood swings. When a person is constantly experiencing rapid fluctuating emotions very often, this could be a sign of mental illness. 
Mental instability can cause a person to be emotionally unstable. They can be happy one minute, sad the next minute, or angry. So if you have those emotions and you one minute you're happy, the next minute you may feel sad, you may be dealing with some instability in your mental state. And let's talk about some characteristics of mental stability. They feel good about themselves. They do not become overwhelmed by emotions such as fear, anger, love, jealousy, guilt, or anxiety. They have lasting and satisfying personal relationships. They can laugh at themselves and with others. We're talking about characteristics of someone that is mentally stable. They have respect for themselves and for others, even if there are differences. They are able to accept life's disappointments. They can meet life's um, demands and handle their problems. They make their own decisions. They shape their environment whenever possible to adjust to it when it's necessary. So they are people that can just take on the world. And they are able to conquer the things that um, life throw at them. But the people that or dealing with mental instability, I have a scripture that the Lord gave me to give you. And that's Matthew 11, 28 and 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus invites all those who are weary and burdened to come to him for rest. He promises to give rest for our souls and offers us a light burden. In our struggles with mental health, Jesus offers comfort and peace that surpasses all understanding. By surrendering our burdens to him, we can find rest and restoration for our soul. So there is nothing that you're going through that you cannot give to God. He wants us to give us our burdens that are holding us down, that is keeping us from worshiping him in whole heart and in spirit and in truth. He wants us to cast them to him. So he's the one that is able to do what you cannot do. And another scripture that the Lord gave me, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcend all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, God invites us to cast our anxieties on him, our imaginations onto him. And we do that through prayer, giving thanks and presenting our request to God. God, I have this stronghold in my life that is holding me back. Lord, I give it to you. I want this removed from me. I no longer want it to hold me back because I want to be free in my worship with you. I want to be available to go forth and, what, and say what this says the Lord freely. And in the position I'm in now, as a minister of the word of God, 
And I don't know if any other minister could relate to this, but whenever it's time for you to go forth, all kind of anxiety comes up. I don't care how deep in prayer you are, anxiety tries to rise up and start making you think um, you're going to say something wrong, you're going to do something wrong. Because one of my biggest um, things I try to, I don't want to say nothing thus says me because I am nothing. I want everything that comes forth only be the words of the Holy Spirit. And so the enemy will try to toy with my mind. You didn't study enough. You don't know the word enough. You can't um, uh, say the scriptures. You're not worthy. And anxiousness just rise up in me to where sometimes I want to say, oh, God, I can't do this. I cannot do this. And then the Lord said to me, you can do this because you're doing this in me. You can't do this on your own. You can only do it through my strength and through my knowledge that I give you. But that's how you, you come up against those thoughts that the enemy try to throw at you to keep you down. Because he don't want the word to go forth. He don't want, he doesn't want us to be in a place where we can truly hear God. That we can truly be uh, a vessel that God can use. So he try to keep you down in any way possible that he can. So why is mental health stability important? Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act. It also helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make healthy choices. Mental health is important at every stage of life, from childhood and adolescence through adulthood. I will define mental stability for the Christian as the ability to defend the mind in such a way that the enemy can no longer use it as a playground and instead submit to and lives by the spirit. I'm going to say that again. I will define mental stability for the Christian as the ability to defend the mind in such a way that the enemy can no longer use it as a playground. A playground. What is what is your state of mind? And I'm thinking, as a child, when you went to the playground, you used to be so excited because it was so many things that you can get on. So many things you can get on the swing, you can get on the slide, um, you can get on the little riding things. So you went from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. To eventually you got tired. So when the enemy used your mind as a playground, he is taking your mind here. He's taking your mind over there. He's taking your mind here. To the point that you just don't know you're in a state of confusion. And when you're in a state of confusion, you cannot focus. You don't know where to turn. Because your mind is all over the place. And when your mind is all over the place, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you can't hear because your mind is cluttered. So in Romans 8, 5 and 7 says, Those who live according to the flesh have, have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life 
and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Nor can it do so. So how can we, how can we operate when we are operating um, in the spirit and have our minds set on the desires of God? See, you do this by building borders and controlling what goes in and out of your mind. But this requires discipline. You got to have a disciplined mind to where you control what you see, you control what you watch, you control what you listen to. But this is discipline. Why is the why is the mind important to begin with? The mind is a battlefield that the enemy tries to infiltrate all the time. He knows that whatever controls the mind controls everything else. Which is why we must begin to orient our minds toward the spirit and away from the enemy and his devices. And I'm going to say that again. He knows that whatever controls the mind controls everything else. Which is why we must begin to orient our minds toward the spirit and away from the enemy and his devices. He knows if he can get you in the mind, he can get everything else. Because if you, if he messes with your mind and keep you off focus, everything else will fall apart. Everything else will just fall apart. So that's why we have to be mindful of what we set our mind on. We can't keep focusing on negative things because guess what? That's what is going to um, negate the rest of your, your life. If you're dealing with a sickness and the enemy comes in your mind and say, Oh, you, will never, you ain't going to be healed. God don't heal anymore. He stopped healing 2,000 years ago. You're going to die from this. And if you're not careful and listen to what the thoughts are coming in your mind, you'll walk away from your healing. You will believe the lies of the enemy. We have to fight the enemy with the word of God. How can we grow in defending our minds? We can grow in defending our minds by positive and negative thoughts are essential to mental health and stability. What influences you allow and don't allow in your mind can shape your mental development as a Christian. A fortified mind leads to a holy mindset so I'm going to ask you today and give you some uh, three points so how do you maintain um, how do you maintain mental stability number one by controlling your thoughts Philippians 4 and 8 finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Thinking about these things bring to the forefront of your mind joy, peace, and most importantly, God's glory of God. 
what he has done and will do. Whenever you are weak, negative thoughts enter the mind with ease. They tend to overshadow and dwarf positive thoughts, even when the good outweighs the bad. Strangely, they seem to appear more real to us. However, constantly renewing our positive thoughts is the best way to counter such thoughts. So if you're weak in spirit and negative thoughts come in, no matter how good God has been to you in the past, they would end up outweighing the good has, that God has done for you. And they will become more real and more visible to you. The negativity versus what God has done. So what you have to do is go back and remember what God has done for you. And replace those things with joy and peace. And remember, God is always with us. Start giving God praise when you start feeling down. Start giving God praise when you feel uh, the world is coming against you. Start giving God praise when your finances are not where they're supposed to be. Because when things like that come up, it will affect your mental stability. When you know you have bills to pay, but your ends are not meeting, that will affect your mental stability. But you give God the praise anyhow. Because you know what he has done for you before in the past. When you was up against the wall, how he came and he seen about you. How he brought you out of that thing. And that will bring you out of that state so you can get back to stability versus being instability. Tell the devil what, how big your God is. And not talk about how big your problem is. We got to stop complaining. I've been guilty of that. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed because we wait on the Lord to come forth and, and deliver his promises. And it's like he's taking forever. But he's our own time God. And he knows what we're going through. And he knows what we need. But you cannot be... Uh, usable if you always in a state of depression depression sucks the life out of you you can't focus you don't want to get up you don't want to move all you want to do is wallow in your sorrow and as apostle talked to yesterday about addictions and I was I wasn't able to finish the lie but I went back I got into work and I I plugged up and I, I, I finished listening. And the Lord told me people also can be addicted to depression. People can be addicted to feeling down. Because that's all they know. And when, and when the Lord come in and try to remove that thing, they grab it and bring it back. Because this don't feel familiar for me to have joy. For me to have peace, this doesn't feel right because I've been um, operating in depression for so long that it's become my norm. It's my, my shirt I put on every day to walk around in doom and gloom. Woe is me. But God is saying today we got to get out of that because he cannot use you until you break free from that. You have to break free from that thing. He wants us to have a clear mind. A clear heart. So he, we could be used for his purpose. And a lot of times we use that because we want sympathy from people. We're addicted to sympathy. We're addicted to the attention that it gets, whether it's negative. Some people like the negative attention. They can't, if they feel like they can't get the positive attention, maybe they didn't get it as a child growing up. So now they know if I act like something is wrong, 
if I'm sick all the time and then I'm getting this attention, then this is what I'm going to do because it worked for me. But that's not of God. That is not of God. That is not how he wants us to operate. Because you're not being an example to others of, of what God has done for you in your life. If you always got a sad story. If you always feel like the world is against you. And woe is me. Woe is me. And then people come and give you a hug. And then, and then we write back. To where we was before. That is not given the example of what Christ looks like. Yes, we're going to have times when life is life. In. Yes, we're going to have times where we're weighed down. Yes, we're going to have time where we want to give up, but we got to be able to pick ourselves up. We can't waddle in that thing. We cannot waddle in this thing. Because we got to be examples of Christ. We have to be the, the examples of what, what Christ looks like. And you can't always be looking sad. Like your best friend will love you. We have to show them the way, the right way. And again, when life is life and it's going to happen, because he, he didn't promise us that it was going to be rainbows, it's going to be stars and Kool-Aid every day. We're going to have stuff that happens to us. But we got to be the example to show the ones that are going through, well, yes, I went through it too. But let me tell you what God did, how he brought me out of that. I got, I got my mind back on track. I got my mind back out of that dark place through the help of the Holy Spirit. Because I have to be able to be focused. I got to have that mental clarity. Elect later and um Carlisha talked about the clarity of the mind. All that's important. We gotta be able to, to be clear. We gotta be able to see. We gotta be able to hear God. Amen. In order to fight this thing. The second thing, being mindful of our influences. Being mindful of our influences. James 1 and 8 says, Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Whether we like to believe it or not, books, Music, podcasts, shows, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, all social media can affect our mental development in Christ. All these things can affect our mental development in Christ. All these things mentioned come with an agenda. Something their creators wanted you to take away in the end. Sometimes that agenda can be a good thing meant to entertain you, but sometimes it isn't. Sometimes that is they incite temptation, whether knowingly and unknowingly, in a world where the enemy has made unacceptable things acceptable. The Christian is unable to consume solid food. We have to be mindful of the things that we are entertaining and we're calling entertainment. Because you could be innocently watching something and then it turns to something else. And before you know it, I always say the internet 
or social media platforms, they are like a rabbit hole. You may start it off watching something that was funny. And before now, before you know it, you keep scrolling and keep going. Now you watching a man taking a shirt off or a woman doing a, 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 a sensual dance. And you say, well, how did I get here? Now all these thoughts and feelings start rising up in you that may lead you astray. So as soon as those things rise up, you got to hurry up and, and click off that thing. Nah, I'll say, nah, I, I see what you're doing. You know, I've been delivered from this. I've been delivered from sexual sin. I've been delivered from whatever it is that is, is going to show up in front of you. So we got to be mindful of the influences that we are uh, allow to come into our lives. Because the enemy is sneaky. He's very cunning and sneaky. Because it will affect our growth. It will affect our mental development in Christ. It's, we've been hearing word after word after word about this is the year of deception. And we have to be mindful of the things that we are connecting with and the people we're connecting to. Because you will have people come in your life to tell you the things that you're doing or the things that you're watching. It's okay. It's nothing wrong with it. It's innocent. But if it's corrupting your mind and making you think about a thing more than you should, you need to let that thing go. If it's taking your focus off of God, you need to let that thing go. And the last thing, Fortify. Fortify means provide a place with defensive work as protection against attack. Build defense around, protect, and secure. Romans 8, 5 and 7 says, It brings us into alignment with what the Spirit desires for us and gives us strength to face the obstacles in our paths. With a mindset of holiness, we will be more disciplined in seeking God and fellowship and more stable against the chaos of evil. Sustainable mental fortitude leads to stability. When we are fortified mentally, we position our mindset to ripen into, the, into a holy mindset. Laying good foundations and building up our barricades is how to begin to fortify this mindset. A holy mindset is virtuous and disciplined, one that seeks Jesus and his goodness. Seeks Jesus and his goodness. We have to have a fortified mind. We got the later foot got look lay a good foundation, which is the word of God. And we got to build up barricades. Barricades around our mind. That we cannot allow, allow in and everything in. We have to block out the, the enemy. Just think about back in the times. When the kings were here and they built, they lived in fortresses. They had walls built around where the enemy, when the enemy showed up, he had to fight to get in. He was, they, he just wasn't able to walk in. He had to fight to get in. The enemy did. It's a protection. So we got to build a protection around our minds. We got to build a protection of our, around our minds so we can have and operate in mental stability. To win this war against Satan, we need to take control of our thought life, take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We take those thoughts captive with the word of God that addresses them. 
when you identify and attack a stronghold in your life, the truth that comforts, find out what God says about it. Then attack it and destroy it. Find your scripture in the, in the word of God. And the scripture, the focus scripture today is what we need to focus on today. You need to read it. You need to speak it. You need to sing it. And you need to apply its truth over and over. Until whatever stronghold that you have is destroyed. So you can have mental stability. To be able to be used by God. So you can have a clear mind and a clear thought press. So you can hear God. That can give you direction for your life. We can't be all over the place. We got to be stable in Him. And the only way we can be stable in Him. Is to be able to hear Him. And how to know Him. <clears throat> and to know his voice. Amen. So on today, as you go about your day, ask yourself, am I, am I mentally stable? Or am I instable? And if you are, or instability, I'm sorry, or unstable. And if you feel like you are mentally unstable. Go to God and say, God, I thought I I thought my mind was where it needed to be. It was uh, in a place of stability. But God, I see now that the thoughts that I have allowed in that we have to focus on you, God. So take this thing from me. And to know you, God, is to know your word and what your word says about my life. I have allowed a lot of negative thoughts to come into my mind. But I want to replace those negative thoughts with what your word says about me. What your word says who I am in you. Who am I in you, God? So I can see clear and I can have mental stability in you. And that's your word for my life. Your promises for my life. Eat those promises. Take, a, take hold of those promises for your life. Get to know God's mind. So your mind could be stable. That you will be able to hear God's thoughts and know God's thoughts. And you can ask yourself, God, is this something that's from you? Or is this something that's from the enemy? Or is it me? Because this is not lining up with your word. Because you said that I am your child. That you love me. But right now, God, to be honest, I'm not feeling love. I feel like the weight of the world is all just on me and I just feel overwhelmed. Have that conversation with him. Take control of your mind. When the enemy tries to feed you something that's going against the word, fight back with that word. That's why you got to have that mental stability. So you be able to fight back. Because if you sweep in spirit, you can't fight back. You would just sit down and let the enemy keep beating you over the head. He would keep, bring, he would keep bringing up things from your past to keep you in condemnation so you cannot go forth. He would keep up to, oh, you remember when you used to do such and such? And, you know, he used to mess with me in that way. And I used to come back with him. Yeah, that was me. 
but I'm a new creature in Christ. My, my mind has been renewed. I'm no longer the same because now I'm walking in Christ Jesus. You got to tell the devil. You got to, you got to, you can't just sit there and just let him talk all day. You got to come back with something. Because before you know it, you so down and depressed and don't even feel like you're worthy and, or, or have value. You have no fight. You have no fight left in you. So on today, I'm going to pray for mental stability over God's people. So Father God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come forth um, to be able to speak to your people, God. I pray for all the ones that are in the sound of my voice that are dealing with uh, mental instability. God, I pray against any strongholds that are holding them back, God, to be able to get uh, closer to you, God. Because we know that just a trick and device of the enemy, God. And I pray, God, that every negative thought that are coming in their mind, God, that they will be, be replaced with your thoughts, with God thoughts, your heart, God. And I pray right now that um, the strongholds are lifted off them, that their hearts will be in right position to hear from you, God. And I pray for the ones that that are on the sound of my voice, God, on this day that are walking in stability, that have the, um, the fight they need, that have the boundaries and the borders and, the, and fortified um, in you, God, that they will continue. Um, to go forth in your strength, God, that they will be able to still continue to stand up against the enemy, God. So if they see their sister and brother that may be going through something uh, mentally, God, that they will be able to go over to them and give them encouraging word to get their sister and brother on track, God. Because, God, you are raising up an army to fight against this this deception, this things that is going on in this world, the enemy is trying to deceive us, God. And we got to be able to have a clear mind and have to be able to be focused on you, to, to fight, to fight, to fight. We have to be able to fight. And we can only fight with the word of God. And I just pray, God, right now, peace over everyone. I pray for everyone, I pray for peace of mind, peace in their spirit, peace in their heart. That when life rise up against them, God, that they will have your words to speak against. And I pray, God, that we will go forth and continue to be the examples that you have called us to be. To be your walking word, your, your example, your putting your word in action so they can see us as the written word God come to life in our life and I pray these things in your son Jesus name amen and amen and I want to thank everyone for joining um, us this morning on this day 20 again day 20 of uh, fasting and praying. It has been a blessing. Uh, I wasn't praying, planning on being on here this long, but uh, I heed to the Holy Spirit. I heed to the Holy Spirit. So um, I thank you for everyone that's joining. Um, announcement for the Herd Ministry. Um, let me go back to it. Hold on. Um, I know she will uh, first lady will reach out to us um, due to the weather and she is dealing with some health issues we pray for her right now in the name of Jesus that she is healed she is healed 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 in the name of Jesus but we are um, we will not be in person we will be in, on the zoom um, at 8 o'clock so all uh, part of the her ministry please join us at 8 o'clock 8 a.m. Um, by Zoom, she will send the link out. Um, and for those that um, are new to this ministry, um, my name is Janetta Mose. I'm one of the ministers here at the House of Rescue Church Ministries. 
um, well, Apostle Brown and Lady Brown are the leaders of our church. They are some um, two people that are love God, and they are an example, and they they are um, they are witnesses. They they examples. <laughs> I mean, they, they come against a lot, but um, they show you the right way. Amen. So, um, we just thank you for this opportunity. Um, another message. Um, the Her Ministry will be live. It will be live on Her page as well. Okay. Um, so, if you um on a Her page, you can watch it that way or by Zoom. Okay. Um, so we just thank you. We just thank you to them. We thank you for all of the um, people of House of Rescue Church Ministries. If you do not have a church home, you are welcome to come to 726 Elba Avenue. Um, on tomorrow, we have our Sunday school that starts at um, 9 o'clock. And we have a worship service starts at 1030. So please come and join us if you don't have a church home. Um, you can also watch us by live on uh, social media and also on um, YouTube. So I just pray that you guys were blessed. I pray that there were some things that were spoken today that you may needed to hear. And I speak blessings over you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Again, women, um, her ministry, we will be um, going live at 8 a.m. on Zoom and also on the her page. Everyone be blessed. Love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Best operate in mental stability. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Be blessed.